Hello everyone! Good morning! Welcome to Let's Do Research with Dr. S. This is Dr. Sarah Namoko and I am your partner in your research journey. In this video, we shall be learning how to format your survey questionnaire. In my previous video, we have learned how to word the individual question items in your survey questionnaire. This time, we're going to learn how to format your survey questionnaire. A survey questionnaire, which we have learned in the previous video, refers to one of the methods for collecting statistical information about the attributes, uh, attitudes, beliefs, perceptions, and many other information about our target population using a structured set of questions. And because we gather the data through a structured questionnaire, therefore our questionnaire should be so formatted such that it will be understandable and it will be easy to read by our respondents. So in this video, I am going to share with you some tips how to format our research questionnaire or survey questionnaire. First tip. In case you will not be there to implement the survey questionnaire or you are going to do the questionnaire online, you don't know who will receive the questionnaire and who will answer the questionnaire. Therefore, it is important to use filtering questions so that the respondents, once they open your questionnaire and they found out that they are not qualified, then they will not continue answering your survey questionnaire. For example, in my own study, I said there, are you an employee in any of the campuses of the Philippine State University System under study? Yes or no? If your answer is no, thank you for your time. You can stop now. If your answer is yes, please proceed to the next question. And then the second filtering question is that, are you teaching in any of the campuses of the Philippine State University System under study? Yes or no? If your answer is no, thank you for your time. You can stop now. If your answer is yes, please proceed to the next question. In this way, I can be sure that the respondents of my study are employees of the Philippine State University understudy and that they are a teaching employee, meaning that staff, office staff, office clerk, janitors, uh, security guards, administrative who are not teaching cannot answer the questionnaire because they are not the intended respondents of the study. Another tip is to use warm-up questions at the beginning of your questionnaire survey or survey questionnaire. These warm-up questions may include the age, sex, academic qualification, socioeconomic status. In the case of my study, I included their rank in the university because it's part of the profiling of my respondents. And another one is, in, my, in the case of my study, I was asking about uh, web to tools for learning. So I, I gave them a, a picture of the web to tools and then I asked them if they are familiar of any of these tools or if they are using any of these tools. Next uh, tip is that you should number the questions consecutively. Uh, be, very, be very particular to avoid any repetitions or omissions of the numbers because it can cause confusion for your respondents. And also, it is highly encouraged that you should avoid using unique number for each question because if you do that, it will create confusion for you especially when you start coding the responses. The next tip that I would like to share with you is to provide the basis for the respondent's decision or choice of answer. For example, in my own questionnaire, I put a title for each subsection so that the respondent will understand what, what is the information being asked from them in this particular section. It's also important that you tell your respondents what is the meaning of their responses. Give the meaning of the scale that you are going to ask them to answer. It's also important that for each question item, you put the corresponding number. 
no from a strongly disagree or from strongly agree to strongly disagree the next tip that i'm going to share with you is to differentiate the questions from your answer category how do you do that you use a regular type font for the questions and then use uppercase letters for the choices or for the answer and it's also important if you have specific instruction for each item put them inside a parenthesis and in a lowercase letter example do you favor setting standards in basic skills as a requirement for high school graduation take note that your question is in lowercase letters and your specific instruction is inside the parenthesis and your answer is written in uppercase letters the next tip that i'm going to share with you is to use numbers to identify the various response categories in this way the numbers that you assign in each options that you want your respondents to answer represent a form of pre-coding that will facilitate your the processing of your data for example here what is the highest level of education that you have completed take note that the question is written in lowercase letters and the instruction the specific instruction is enclosed in a parenthesis and then the question the choices are, are written in uppercase and each choice has a corresponding number meaning that later on when you encode the data into the excel file then you can use these numbers to uh, represent your answer when you code the data another tip is when you write the response categories for which your respondent will choose an answer from you arrange them vertically rather than horizontally for example what is your present marital status and then you put the choices horizontally this is a poor formatting how you are going to correct that is to arrange the response categories vertically like this next one be consistent in assigning numbers to the various answer categories always use the same number for the same answer throughout the questionnaire according to scholars it is advisable to use low numbers to the negative responses and higher numbers to the positive responses for example if you prefer no then you can assign one and yes you can assign two or for example you have choices like unfavorable and favorable you can assign one to the uh, negative response which is unfavorable and two to a positive response which is in this case favorable number eight now it's my mistake number nine you should have your questionnaires reproduced by a high quality printing method take note that if your questionnaire is poorly uh, printed your respondents might not be interested to answer because it's difficult to read it's not clear remember that form is as equal as the substance of your survey questionnaire and finally keep the questionnaire as short as possible do not leave important questions towards the end of the questionnaire and do not break the question one question over two pages for example you will ask questions that will require answers to be completed in the next page avoid that what you should do put that question to the next page that will be all for now thank you very much i hope you have learned something from this short tutorial video about formatting your survey questionnaire now let me bring you to the references that i have used in the development of this study once again, this is Dr. Sarah Namoko and I am your partner in your research journey. Thank you very much. God bless and bye-bye.